to Delta State now, where Governor Ifani Okowa on Friday said that the state recorded 83 new cases of COVID-19 in two days due to community transmission. The governor said the situation became aggravated because people failed to observe the prescribed protocols, such as wearing of face masks in public places, maintaining social and physical distancing, and others to keep the virus in check. The governor said that the 400 confirmed new cases of COVID-19 recorded in the state as at June the 18th was largely due to the failure of the residents to obey stipulated guidelines for the containment of the disease. The governor noted that the level of infection was on the rise due to the lackadaisical attitude of people who erroneously believed that the pandemic was a fluke. He said that the treatment centers in the state were already full of patients, emphasizing that the caution, the caution was needed to manage the alarming rate of infection and transmission. And joining us live is Charles Anyagu, who is the Commissioner for Information in Delta State. Good afternoon, Honorable Commissioner. Good afternoon, Amaka, and thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. And do help us make sense of what is going on in Delta <coughs> State. As at June the 18th, you have 400 new cases registered. Why is the case in Delta State rising? Is it that the guidelines are not being followed or something different is happening? Well, let me say that it's not only in Delta State they are having um, a rise in the numbers. It's across the length and breadth of the country you are having... Um, uh, number the numbers rising in a number of states. As of this morning, we will now have uh, 418 confirmed cases as against what we had on the 18th, which was 400, like you rightly read in your in your uh, report. And then out of this number, 281 is in the active states. That's those that are being managed by head personnel. And then of course, 119 have been um, discharged, having been successfully managed. Then uh, 18 deaths, uh, for us, 18 fatalities. The governor has actually explained the reason why we're having the spike in the numbers, but beyond the issue of individuals who are not also conforming to some of the rules and guidelines uh, that uh, we have um, given out in line with the NDC, NCDC uh, protocols, uh, there are a lot of other issues that may also account for the large numbers. Number one, today we are doing more testing. And then because we also carried out a lot of sensitization, a large number of persons are now showing up at the treatment centers before now, you do know that there are a lot of prejudices, so individuals don't even want to uh, report on time, which was why in the first uh, one month of uh, the outbreak of the virus in the state, particularly in April and in the early part of May, our uh, death rate was as high as over 30 percent. Uh, but today, the death rate has dropped to as low as 4.3 percent, because now people report earlier than they were used to, that they were doing, and then a large number of persons are now beginning to realize that the virus is real. What we did was to ensure that uh, those who have been treated uh, successfully became part of our ambassadors. And so they joined us in giving out the message. So the earlier mistrust or the earlier doubt in the minds of the people that COVID-19 is not real because they wanted to see those who may have contracted it is dying down gradually. And so that has also contributed in getting more number of persons to show up and then get tested rather than dying at home. But all the same, we are still continuing with our sensitization, all with a view to getting our people realize that it's important that um, they uh, embark and, of course, adhere to all the protocols, particularly wearing of face masks whenever they are in the public, and then as much as possible maintaining a reasonable social distance whenever they are uh, conversing with um, some persons in the public. Right. So we do hope that if we do that, the numbers may have to come down. Honorable Commissioner, I mean, the statement from the uh, uh, governor of the state uh, indicated that there are people who think or believe, as you have also established, that uh, the pandemic is a fluke. What would have necessitated this form of thinking? Is it a question of the strategy of the communication or the management of the communication to the people, you know, when this uh, pandemic broke out? Well, you do know that um, uh, we have a doubt in Thomas's, uh, uh, everywhere across the length and breadth of Nigeria, even in Lagos State, that today remains the epicenter in the country. You still see a number of persons who say that, no, they want to eat money. Even among religious leaders, people you would think that are very well read, they begin to uh, preach and say things that will not in any way help the, uh, the actions of government towards curbing the virus. So there's still a lot, a lot of uh, individuals who believe the virus is not real. But beyond that, you also have the pull and push factor. 
It is very easy to ask people to stay at home, not to do a few things. But what pushes them out is the need for survival. So even when they realize that it's important for them to maintain social distance or stay out of crowded places, the need for them to survive pushes them to other marketplaces, pushes them to areas that ordinarily they needed to avoid. And you do know that at the time we had a lockdown, the numbers were not moving at the rate that it's moving at the moment. But the partial, um, the partial release of, of the of lifting of the lockdown, uh, to some extent, also accounted for the spike in the numbers. And we did say that time that as soon as you let go those uh, very stringent measures, which actually was necessary for us to, uh, release, to relax a little because there was a need for people to survive. There was also the need for us to sustain the economy of the state, ditto that of the entire 35 other states and the federal capital territory. And so whether we like it or not, the individuals will have to do engage in one business or the other. The presidential task force has also made it very clear in their regular briefing that um, as time goes on, we may have to learn how to live with it, but observing these protocols will assist us. The way it is now is very clear, according to medical practitioners, that the vaccine uh, doesn't seem to have any known vaccine at the moment, and that the, the virus doesn't seem to have any known vaccine at the moment, uh, even if the World Health Organization and a number of other uh, professionals in the health sector are putting in a lot of effort with a view to developing one. But pending when that uh, is uh, released and then possibly made available to countries across the world, it's important that as human beings, we begin to observe all those protocols. All right. They are difficult, but observing them is better than dying. Mm -hmm. Honorable Commissioner, 418 is still, I mean, a huge number as had today. Uh, speak to us about the progress uh, that the, your administration is uh, making in terms of what is the different things uh, that has happened so far from the last time you were on the show? What has improved? What other uh, additional, uh, additional effort is put in place in the state to curb this further spread of the COVID-19? Well, at the risk of sounding immodest, I dare say that our state is in the forefront of uh, sensitization across the country. You do be, we're also taking advantage of both um, national media uh, houses as well as um, local uh, means of uh, communicating to members of the public. The reason why we have embarked on that aggressive sensitization, also taking advantage of our state orientation bureau, and then what we are doing at the ministry in addition to what the Minister of Health is also doing, uh, taking advantage of those who are in the health education department of the ministry, mm -hmm. is to try as much as possible to let individuals realize that the virus is real, one. Secondly, to also curb the incidences of stigmatization, because what stigmatization does is that it makes individuals who may have come down with the virus not to want to report. And if they don't report, the two things happen. One, it is either they will die, or secondly, they now go ahead to infect others. And when that happens, you now have a spike in the numbers. It has also been proven that a large number of persons that comes out with this virus may become uh, asymptomatic. And when they become asymptomatic, at the earlier time, it has not been proven that asymptomatic patients uh, may not infect persons. Because it's possible that it's uh, at a time where it's, they have not been able to, the, the symptoms have not started showing. That does not mean they don't have it. Mm -hmm. But our sensitization you taking advantage of those who have discharged it successfully and letting them know that the virus is real and that they were treated and by the grace of God that they have recovered, is helping us to now have more number of persons report uh, at the uh, treatment center. Before now, we had a number of persons who died even before their result uh, was made public because they did not report to the treatment centers on time mm -hmm. and they were thinking that uh, it's malaria. Some of them kept complaining that they have malaria and that it's not... Um, yielding to the, different, to the different treatments. A number of persons who insist that it's a question of a multi-drug resistant uh, strain of malaria. But we have said the moment you have those feelings, let it be known to our medical practitioner so that you are properly diagnosed. And if it's proven that you have COVID-19, you will immediately be treated. Mm -hmm. But if it is malaria, you also be treated malaria. So you don't lose anything when you report on time. Right. But not reporting on time is injurious to the individual, even as it's also injurious to the society. And so we'll continue along that line, hoping that our people will continue to cooperate with us and that once that happens, we'll be able to have a flattening of the numbers and possibly at the end of the day, uh, curb the spread of the virus. Uh, Commissioner, before I let you go, uh, I mean, you have clearly established the reasons for this increase in numbers, especially attributing it to the fact that uh, some persons are not observing the pres prescribed protocols. Now, what, is there any measures put in place or what, uh, how do you... Um, 
the defaulters, what do you do to defaulters? What can be done? What, what, what are the prescriptions of uh, how to deal with those who are violating these rules? In the first place, our strength is in sensitizing the people. Because even when you want to uh, go and arrest everybody and force and then get the people to urine them in, uh, by the time you also put them together, which facility are you going to keep all of them? That does not mean that we are um, ignoring those who decide to do the wrong thing. For those who are into commercial um, transportation, we have said if you are caught not uh, adhering to the strict rules in terms of the number of persons you are allowed to convey either in a bus or in a tricycle, we will not hesitate to impound the vehicle or the tricycle, and that we've been doing. But beyond that, we have also uh, put in place certain protocols uh, in different hotels and areas where people gather. Up to this moment, we have not uh, reopened the cinema or the viewing centers uh, because we believe that we've not been able to find a solution around that because the economy needs to survive. And then the religious groups, I don't want to say have not helped matters, but the fact is that a number of religious groups want to gather as much as they want. But we have insisted that, no, you must maintain a reasonable social distance. You can't hold more than one service in a day. Highest thing, you can hold one on Sunday, one other one on Wednesday, and even on Friday, so that individuals will not say that as a government that we are killing their faith. But we do believe that um, uh, working together with all segments of the society, both religious bodies, uh, those in the business sector, would have all ended up in um, reducing or flattening the number. Not until we're able to flatten the curve. It's still very, very dangerous. It does a lot of things to the economy of the state because so much money is also being um, spent in managing uh, this particular virus, and as well as uh, a lot of energy that's been invested in dealing with it rather than focusing on a number of issues. But as a government, we have tried to also look beyond the COVID-19 so that we are not bogged down by just COVID-19. We are still taking steps to strengthen our economy by investing in areas that will help us mop up unemployment. We believe that the more people are engaged and employed, the more it is uh, to, uh, easier to lead them and to sensitize them. All those who are putting in place, we do hope that as we continue along this line, we would have been able to flatten the curve and at the end of the day, get out of this uh, pandemic that is not doing anybody any good at the moment. Indeed. Thank you so very much, Honorable Commissioner, for co information in Delta State. Uh, Charles. Thank you very much, Amaka. All right, stay safe out there too.